Hello. Today I will discuss the horticulture significance and practices to reduce alternate bearing. Alternate bearing or irregular bearing occurs in many fruit and nut species as well as many forest species such as oaks shown in this picture. From recent research it seems that alternate bearing tendency is a genetic trait but sugar levels in the plant as well as external stimuli such as extremely cold or hot weather during flowering or fruit set also can influence it. Alternate bearing might be controlled by the perception of a few parallel and independent pathways. Some are endogenous and some are external such as day length, temperature, etc. This graph here shows honey tangerine yields in boxes per acre for almost 40 years. We can see very large fluctuations in yields over this period. Worldwide, alternate bearing results in at least hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in lost income. Historically, alternate bearing has proven to be very difficult to manage successfully. Scientific understanding of the mechanisms of alternate bearing are poorly understood. This graph shows California table olive production from 1995 until 2013. Again, note the large swings in production over the years. Finally, here is the example of pistachio. Average yield in pounds per acre is on the y-axis over 30 years. Again, note the large differences in yield between an on or heavily cropping year and an off lightly cropping year. Alternate bearing is present in most deciduous tree species and the major yield limiting parameter in off years is few flowers produced or retained as in the case of pistachio. In pistachio the flower buds are produced during the on years but then fall off over the season. The severity of alternate bearing can be calculated by using the alternate bearing index formula where I equals the absolute value of year one yield minus year two yield divided by year one yield plus year two yield. Where I equals zero where there is no alternate bearing and I equals one when there is complete alternate bearing. These values can be averaged over a number of years. The alternate bearing index can be used as a tool to select or reject cultivars. Here in this table, B5-8 and B19-1 have very high indices and have been culled from the breeding program. Whereas Lost Hills has a very low alternate bearing index. Here is a picture of a Mercot tangerine that collapsed and died from heavy fruiting. The loss of young white feeder roots likely caused the Mercot's death. Here is a graph of the dry weight of feeder roots growing in a tube over time. In a lightly cropping, heavily cropping, and extremely heavily cropping trees. Note significantly more feeder roots in the light crop trees than in the heavily crop trees. The trees that die because of the extremely heavy crop had almost no white feeder roots. That likely limited water uptake and caused the trees to die. Large annual fluctuations in available fruit can cause unstable marketing conditions which result in economic and managerial problems. For example, machines such as harvest equipment still need to be maintained and serviced even during low crop years where they are used very sparingly. Large annual fluctuations in available fruit can result in lower crop values in the on versus the off year. Here we have the green bars representing the average California pistachio yields on this axis and the blue line represents the value in dollars per pound on this axis. 
There is a trend for higher prices during off lightly cropping years and lower prices during heavily cropping years. Let's look at some other problems that alternate bearing causes. Increased demand for carbohydrates and mineral nutrients in on years is correlated with leaf scorch and limb dieback in prune and pecan, which is caused by excessive potassium re remobilization from leaves to fruit, and thus limbs shrivel and die. Increased demand for carbohydrates and mineral nutrients in on years are correlated with limb breakage resulting from excessive crop load. And in pecan and other crops, winter cold injury and tree mortality increase following on years as compared with off years. This is likely a result of the limited accumulation of non-structural carbohydrates such as starch and sugars in their tissues. Sugars act as an antifreeze in fruit trees to minimize freeze damage. Excessive crop loads break limbs, as in this case here with a French prune tree. Now I'd like to talk about the possible ecological reasons for alternate bearing. Number one, predator avoidance. Inconsistent fruiting decreases populations of seed-consuming insects and animals and may increase seed survival. Another possible reason is resource acquisition. The off or low crop year in the alternate bearing cycle represents a period of resource acquisition and storage of carbohydrates and nutrients by the tree and may decrease the level of tree collapse and increase the life of the tree. Practices to decrease alternate bearing include one, environmental factors such as avoidance of synchronization. That is, environments, pests, and disease pressures can result in low crop yields and trigger an alternate bearing cycle. Here in the picture, a late spring frost in an apple orchard will significantly decrease yields this year and result in a bumper crop the next year. Once a climactic trigger like a hard frost at bloom is pulled, the alternate bearing species is set in the cycle of low followed by high yields. Yields of regular bearing species even out over time, as we can see in this picture. I would like to talk about some of the cultural aspects of alternate bearing. First, fruit thinning and pruning. These practices tend to increase the leaf area to fruit ratio and minimize seeds. This decreases alternate bearing. I should note that some seeds contain plant growth regulators, such as auxins and gibberellins, which can in inhibit return bloom. Early harvest will also decrease alternate bearing. Delayed harvest is reported to decrease return bloom the next year. To decrease the peaks and valleys of yields in alternate bearing crops, you can thin the crop during the heavily cropping year by shake thinning or by spray thinning using fruit thinning agents. Here they are shake thinning pecans. Here are some shake thinning data in pecan. The severity of the shake increases as you go down this column. These columns are the yields over two years. Severe shaking drops the yields markedly during that year, as we can see here. However, yields in the next year are increased, as we can see here. And as seen by the two year totals shown in this column, in total, shake thinning does not increase or decrease yields. It just produces more even yields over the years. Here are pictures of bloom thinner machines, which are big weed whips that knock the flowers off the trees. These have worked pretty well in peaches and in apples. Now I'd like to talk about some genetic aspects. Variety selection, the potential for fruit set. 
Some cultivars set fruit extremely heavily, and this leads to alternate bearing, and in extreme cases, tree collapse. Another aspect is seediness. High seeded cultivars, for example, an apple and citrus, like this one shown in this picture, tend to alternate bear more severely than cultivars with few seeds. Finally, date of fruit maturity. This is particularly true in pecans, but it's also true in olives. Early maturing pecans and olives have less tendency to bear alternately than cultivars which mature later in the season. Now I would like to discuss environmental factors that contribute to alternate bearing. There are a number of environmental triggers of alternate bearing, including a destruction of blossoms in spring by frost, b rains during pollen shed, and c reduction of stigma receptivity by hot, dry winds. This has been a particular problem for the prune industry of late. All these triggers lead to synchronization of alternate bearing over wide geographic areas. Thank you.